Hey folks, today we're going to take a trip back in time to a, to a time in my computing history that was pretty significant, and that is the year 2005. You see, that's the year that everything changed for me in terms of my computing life. That's the year that I learned to deal with hardware rather than just using a Mac and knowing how to use a Mac. I actually learned how to deal with hardware. I learned Windows and Linux at that point, too. Those of you who know my computing history know I grew up with a Mac OS 8, one of the Mac OS 8 beige machines back in the day. Then I graduated to the G4 computers. And then in the year 2005, I finally got Windows and Linux machines around. So I started out on Mac and ended up going to Windows and Linux. And now I use a combination of all three for different purposes. Uh, and... 2005 had a lot. That had my. That was when I. Uh, <clears throat> that's when I got my first Windows laptop to call my own, which I had Windows and Linux on at the time. That's the year I had my first. I got my first custom built machine, which uh, a buddy from back then helped me build. Thank you, Raculot. You're the man. Um, and you know it was a great year. I I I really discovered a lot in terms of my computing life. And today we're going to take a look at one of the operating systems that really introduced me to stuff back then. And that was Ubuntu 5.04, the second ever release of Ubuntu. That was my first exposure to Linux. And uh, <clears throat> it's the first time I ever saw GNOME 2, the first time I ever saw you know GIMP and all the other utilities that we used to use back then. And the computer I saw it running on was a Dell Dimension or XPS of some sort from the Pentium 2 era. Uh, it was running Ubuntu 5.04 or 5.10, I believe. I think it was 5.04. And uh, <clears throat> it ran it great. I mean, it made an old machine new again back then. And it's and that's exactly what I've replicated here. I've taken my NEC Versa VXI, and I have put Ubuntu 5.04 on it to best replicate what I saw back when I was a when I was a kid, when I was like 14, 15 years old. I was 14 back then, I believe. So that was a while ago. I've taken the battery out of this machine because the battery, I think, has a short in it. So we don't want to blow things up now, shall we? Or do we? So here's what I've done. I took Ubuntu uh, 5.04 and I stuck it on this machine. And I just want to show you guys some of the nostalgic value I have for this. Maybe some of the, the, you who used 5.04 back in the day will look at this and go, Oh, I remember that. <laughs> we'll find out. I believe I've left the, the CD in the drive that installs it, so you'll be able to see that old boot menu. So let's turn this on and check it out. Yep, there's a disk in the drive. I can hear it. There's NEC logo. Goes booting from the CD. Remember this. Remember this boot menu. I do. <laughs> I'm old. I'm an old Linux user. I remember this from way back. I used to run this version of Ubuntu on power PC machines just for fun and you know it was totally useless back then on a power PC machine. I ran it on my Dell Inspiron 8200 I had back then, which was the the first Windows laptop I ever had. Pentium 4 Mobile. Let's boot this just for old time's sake. Ubuntu 504 is actually already installed on the the whopping 6 gig hard drive on this computer. <clears throat> but we might as well watch the boot sequence. Remember when Linux looked like that when it started up? <laughs> uh, the archaic days, man. Linux is a lot easier now than it was, you know, 11 years ago. I will say that. It, came, it has come a long way since those days. And as you can see, this version of Ubuntu, 5.04, is so old that it basically uses the Debian installer. If you look, if you install Debian today using text mode, it looks exactly like this. See, even this this is telltale sign that it's really Debian under the hood. This is this is an early version of Ubuntu. It really didn't become Ubuntuized until 6.06 .06 in the following year, which we will take a look at as well. I plan to look at some of the uh, significant Linux distros in my life, just to give you guys a little bit of history. And this is the first one because it's the first one I was ever exposed to. It, it's basically a Debian installer for all intents and purposes. Now, if you're wondering the specs of this machine, I believe it's a 600 megahertz Celeron based on a Pentium 3. 
Um, it has a 128, uh, me 128 megs of RAM in it. Uh, I think it has ATI video. I can't remember. I can't remember what video is in this. We can find out. <clears throat> it's a tri-spindle machine. It's got floppy, hard drive, and CD-ROM drive. And, you know, I've, I've made a video of this machine before if you want to see it. I couldn't find any network interfaces. <laughs> Don't need them. But, yeah, it, it's bit, that gets the point across. It's, it's a Debian installer, basically. So let's power that machine off. Off. By the way, if if you're in the UK and you'd like to get a hold of a machine like this, the NEC Versa VXI, I've, I've found out that Packard Bell uh, rebadged these NEC machines in the UK. So if you want to get a hold of one of these, um, look for Packard Bells of that era. Just thought I'd mention that. On. There we go. And there's the disk I used. I'll leave that ejected. Grub 1.5. <laughs> Kernel 2.6.10-5386. Oh, man. When I installed it, I used the ext3 file system rather than ext4 that you see nowadays. The 6 gigabyte hard drive in this machine is not very quick, as you might imagine. LVM was around back then. This is before. Um, this is before any of the system D stuff. This is this is Sys5, I believe. Starting up Alsa, the GNOME Display Manager. Yeah, this didn't even have Pulse Audio. It was back then. It was just Alsa, which I think was actually a lot better because Alsa doesn't steal audio streams as much as Pulse Audio does. The Ubuntu drums were still there, and uh, yeah, the Ubuntu drums were still there in version uh, 5.04. Look how nice this this GDM looked back then. This was 11 years ago. Ignore this date, by the way. It's completely wrong. The real date is June 27th, <laughs> 2016. Anyway, yeah, <clears throat> Ubuntu. See how nice GDM used to look? And it was very light back then. Now, prepare yourselves for nostalgia if you were using Linux back, back in these days. Remember that? The old startup sound before they turned it into that annoying drum thing and then got rid of it entirely. <laughs> it's loading the GNOME 2 desktop. Oh, look at that background. Oh, man. Not a very high resolution screen, as you can see, but that's alright. Yeah, connection properties. Just has a loopback network. There's nothing there. Gnome volume control. Look at that, it even has the Gnome foot there still. This, my friends, is my was my first exposure to Linux. It was this desktop with Game open. And Game, for those of you who don't know, is what eventually became the Pigeon instant messaging client. It was Game before it turned into that. So that was my first exposure to Linux. Let's see if we can replicate that. So we go to Internet, game, 
game instant messenger. There you go. That's essentially what it looked like. I'm just going to go with that. <laughs> and what kind of uh what kind of accounts could you add to game back then? AIM and ICQ. Man, ICQ. You use Gadu Gadu group wise. IRC, Jabber accounts, MSN, a Napster account. Wow. <laughs> Yahoo. So, you know, I used to use AIM, MSN, and Yahoo back in these days. So, those are the accounts I would have added to it. Let's quit that. Let's take a look at the rest of the applications that, w that were around 11 years ago on Linux. This, was, this would have been April 2005. Of course, you have Archive Manager, which is, f I believe it's File Roller. I don't know. I don't know how new that... I think File Roller might be newer. I don't know. The calculator is still the same. You can do an advanced calculator. You can do a financial calculator. So you could do... Um, so you can do present value and future value and all that stuff. A scientific calculator so you can be a scientist. Look how many buttons you get. <laughs> there you go. There's your calculator. Come on. Your character map, your dictionary, your text editor, which I believe would be Getit. Or Gedit, if you prefer. Yeah, it's it's the old version of Gedit. There you go. Now one thing I'd like to point out is how little this is running on. This is running on a six hundred megahertz Celeron based on a Pentium 3 with 128 megs of RAM in it. It's running on nothing, and it runs. it's very responsive and runs well. This is why Linux was such a big deal for making old machines new again back in the day. I don't think that's as true as it used to be, but back in, the, back in 2005, that certainly was the case. It was light enough to run on nothing and make it useful. Look at all the games you used to get back then. Solitaire. Let's check out Solitaire. Why not? Yeah. I got an ace already. Nice. Another ace. So it's solitaire. It's just classic Klondike solitaire. Eight tracks, blackjack, five or more. Four in a row, which is basically connect four. Free cell solitaire. No Metris, which is probably Tetris or something. Yeah, it's just Tetris. I don't feel like playing Tetris right now. <laughs> Uh, what else we got? Mahjong. You got Mahjong. Wow. Uh, Mines, which is probably just Minesweeper clone. Yep. Let's see how badly I suck at this. I'm just going to randomly click. Ah oh, man. <laughs> I have no clue how to play Minesweeper, and I don't know how to play the clones either. Nibbles. That sounds like a very British game to me. I ought to go play some nibbles. A worm game for GNOME. It is just mashing the hard drive trying to, trying to load this game. What is this? I don't know how to play this. Oh, I'm controlling the red, that's why. So you control the red worm to go eat the blue thing. This is a, this is like, this is an open source version of another game, and I forget what game it is. I think you, the more you eat, the bigger the worm gets. It's like Snafu or something, almost. Oh. Better turn my computer down, because people are messaging me. Sorry, guys. <laughs> now, here's the game I really wanted to show you, is Robots. You can still find this game today in Linux if you install the GNOME-Games package. Uh, along with a lot of these other games, too. They're still around. However, back in the day, you could actually... The, the guy in robots would actually scream. Nowadays, he doesn't. I think that's an ALSA issue. But... You can make this guy scream if he gets hit by the robots. <laughs> I always found that amusing back in the day. Probably because I was 14 and 15 when I was playing this, but, you know... 
that was always fun. Same gnome, stones. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff in here. This is, this is entirely, this is hugely nostalgic for me. You still had GIMP back then. You had G-Thumb image viewer. Another image viewer, I forget what that is. A postscript viewer and a scanning program. I've actually used Xsane before. It's not too bad. Let's take a look at what version of GIMP this is running. The GIMP 2.2. Man, that's old. <laughs> I still use GIMP to this day. I've been using it since 2005. I discovered it through Linux, of course, and now I use it on Windows and Linux. I think I even used it on OS X for a while, too. Along with Photoshop CS2 on Windows. I don't want to see uh, tips. Now, GIMP was pretty primitive back in these days. Let's make a new thingy. There you go, and there's your workspace. And you get layers and stuff, just like in Photoshop. I use this today to, do, to deal with photos, because I just don't see the point in buying Photoshop to do cropping and image resizing and touch-ups and stuff like that. Well, yeah, that's GIMP. That's a program I still use today. G-Thumb Image Viewer. I like to point out, too, that I still use this very interface today. It's not GNOME 2 today. It is Mate, but this is where this is where Mate came from, is this interface that all of us were so used to for so long. So back then you had Evolution Mail, Firefox, of course, Game, GNOME BitTorrent, GNOME Meeting, a terminal server client, and XChat for IRC. Let's check out Firefox. I want to see what version this is. Now, I, I, I don't have an Ethernet uh, card. I, don't have, I need an Ethernet PCMCIA card to hook this up to the Internet, but it's not going to work that well. <laughs> I mean, let's just face it. This is back when Google was a default search engine. Uh, what else we got here? Yeah, Ubuntu 5.04. Hori Hedgehog. There you go. Ubuntu.com. The wonderful world of Linux. The GNOME desktop. Debian. OpenOffice.org. Yeah, look at all that. What version of Firefox is this? It's got to be like 1.5 or 1.0 or something like that. Oh, holy crap. 1.0.2. <laughs> you can't get much earlier than that, other than maybe betas or something, but damn, that's old. <laughs> and I used to use that, too. I remember Firefox 1.0.2. I remember fi at least the Firefox 1.x series. Look how responsive that is. I just can't believe that. I showed you game already. Let's see what the GNOME BitTorrent client looked like back then. Of course, on Linux, it's traditional that you use BitTorrent to download your different distros of Linux and, and you know, use, use yourself as a seed box so that other people can download uh, versions of Linux without having to use HTTP download sites and waste sites bandwidth. Looks like you have to open a BitTorrent file for it to do anything. That sucks. Can't really show it to you without going through a bunch of effort that's not even worth it. <laughs> See what XChat looked like back then. Oh yeah. Look at all these old servers down here. Ubuntu, Debian, 2600 net, access IRC. Look at all that. Chat junkies, chat net. Was Freenode around back then? Yeah, Freenode was around. QuakeNet. Hey, that's my kind of stuff right there. Cool. <clears throat> Neat stuff, man. Office. So you have OpenOffice, of course, and that's their Evolution is the mail email client, which people still use today. Evolution's still around today. OpenOffice is still around, of course, but the fork of it, LibreOffice, has a lot more active development on it. So that's the one that you want to use today rather than just OpenOffice. You want to be using LibreOffice. But back in these days, OpenOffice was still a Sun Microsystems deal, as you'll see in a minute. So it was still in pretty active development, and Sun was, Sun was awesome. I really wish Oracle hadn't swallowed them up.
Come on, hard drive, you can do it. <laughs> Open Office 1.1, guys. 1.1. Early days. I tell you what, looking at this makes me feel so old because I remember using this like it was just like a year ago. <laughs> Yeah, it's a little slow to start up, as Open Office was. That was pretty normal back then for it to take this long. You just, it just, it's just the way it was. In this case, I think it might just be the the hard drive is slow because it's a six gig drive that was original to this machine. What are the fonts you get? Some of the fonts you get on Ubuntu are interesting. You get Nimbus Roman number nine. Century Schoolbook, Ming. <laughs> Helve oh, you get Helvetica. Nice. Gothic. Free Serif, Free Sans, Free Mono. So a lot of the Microsoft equivalent fonts. There's Courier in there. Which, of course, looks like it's a PostScript font or something like that. With the printer next to it. Looks like it has a lot of some Arabic fonts and stuff too. Yeah, the, what well, they still do this today with fonts like Nimbus Roman Number Nine is a, an equivalent of time equivalent of Times New Roman. <clears throat> Nowadays, uh, the default uh, font in LibreOffice is Liberation Serif, I think. Now this is a font that I thought was interesting. You have the Saab font. Now as a former Saab owner, I just I, I can't help but notice that. Let's type Saab. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> that Saab font's cool. I like that. What else we got? Oh, some Japanese font, or maybe not Japanese, but. Asian fonts. I shouldn't be completely racist. I think some of that's Korean. Not too up on Asian languages. But yeah, Open Office 1.1.3. How about that, huh? Eh. Open Office is a little slow on this computer. I think this could have used a. I think this uh, version of Linux could have used a little bit more RAM. Maybe 256 megs of RAM would have been better. That's what I used to run it on, was 256 megs. Now for audio, what did you get back then? <clears throat> got the CD player, the music player, a recording level monitor, sound juicer, which I still use today, actually, sound recorder, the totem movie player, volume control, and the volume monitor. And all this stuff was for ALSA, or for OSS, rather than Pulse Audio. You had two choices back then. You could use the ALSA audio system or the OSS audio system. A lot of that stuff's just not interesting. There's some interesting stuff in here. The ad remove. Remember ad remove programs? Oh boy, that's what we had before we had Synaptic. Was the ad remove programs uh, application? Of course, you got to enter your password because it's sudo or sudo, however you pronounce it. <laughs> That's so old. Oh my god. What do we have back then for applications? Let's take a look. What could you install? Calculator Emacs. Oh man. You have GIMP for the internet. You can install Epiphany. I remember Epiphany. That was a web browser that I hated. <laughs> Office, you could install Open Office. XPDF, Evolution. Yeah. Yeah, man. That was the old ad program ad remove programs. Bug report tool, configuration editor, which I think I forget what that edited. It's almost like uh it's almost like MS config for uh Linux. Yeah, I, I forget exactly what that edited. It's been a long time. I didn't really use it that much. The floppy formatter is there, which we could use since there's a floppy drive on the side of this machine over here. Uh, but that just shows the age of it, right? <laughs> Network tools, new login, root terminal, 
run as a different user. Syslogs. Uh, oops, I didn't mean to click on that. Whatever. <laughs> anyway, you got your system monitor, which will hope might tell us what's in this machine. If not, I'll just use something else. But that shows you that I have 128 megs of RAM, and I have twice that in swap. So there you go. And that swap is running on a very slow hard drive, so that's uh, it's not going to help very much. And of course, here's the terminal, which is where we want to be right now, because we want to find a few things out. As you can see, I named the uh, I named the computer badly parked Versa. I think there's only one person in my audience that's going to, there's only like, well, maybe more than one. There's only like two people, two or three people that are in my audience that are going to understand that joke. Will, I hope you're watching because memories, man. <laughs> Anyhow, there's your terminal. Let's do LSPCI and see what's in this machine. Not a whole lot coming out of LSPCI. Looks like it has a 440MX chipset. Uh, you get your Intel AC97 audio, Texas Instruments, PCI stuff. Yeah, it's an it's an ATI card in this machine. It's an ATI Rage Mobility, Lucent Wind Modem, ugh. Uh, ISA Bridge, IDE interface, yada yada yada. So yeah, it's a it's a tip. It's a 440MX chipset, which means it's like it's a Pentium 3 based system, which in this case has a Celeron in it. So there you go. Was using LSPCI even way back then. Ubuntu device database. And then there was, of course, the run command here, which, you know, that just let you run something. <laughs> Can't say much more than that. What kind of servers could this connect to back in the day? The same exact stuff that Mate does now. SSH, FTP, FTP with login, a Windows share, which is Samba. Then you have your web dev options as well, and then you can do custom locations as well. These days, I tend to use SSH and WebDAV the most. Secure WebDAV and SSH are what I use now. Back then, I didn't use this at all because I just used this for, like, the Internet, and that was really it. But yeah, that's a little look at Ubuntu 5.04. That wasn't little, actually. That was really long, so... Yeah, that was what Linux was like back in the day. Back in 2005. This, this was my first exposure to it. And it was an important exposure, too. This led me to what I do now. I have Linux on my main computer and most of my machines, apart from my work and gaming computer. The work computer and the gaming computer are the only ones running Windows right now, whereas everything else runs Linux. And it's thanks to my exposure to this that it's gotten to that point for me. It's, an, it's been an 11-year journey, and it's been a very fun journey for me. I mean, it's been frustrating, and I wanted to tear my hair out a couple of times, too, especially back in these early days. But... You know, after using it for a long time, I've grown to really, really like it, and it's thanks to this that I do. So, I just had to pay tribute to this. So, let's shut her down. There it goes, look at all that, shutting down also. Off. There you go. Good night, my sweet prince. <laughs> and there you go, folks. I hope you enjoyed this video, and have a good one, everybody.